So I figured I'd do a quick video here, which will probably end up being like six hours long, um, on how I do the neck openings or how I fix the neck openings. Uh, I get that question sometimes. Uh, when you get the cast, they're, the neck openings are warped. They're out of round, they're not symmetrical. So if you're like me, you want to fix that. So basically what I do, it's pretty easy. Uh, I just worry about the outer shape of the helmet first. Okay, if you hold the helmet up to the light, uh, you can see the silhouette or the shadow of it, and you can see the general outline or shape of it. Now if it looks a little goofy, then you got to add some filler and do some sanding and all that, which is what you see here. Uh, when I looked at this up to the light and I saw the shadow, uh, this area here was down way too far, so I had to bring it out with some body filler. Um, now I have to sand this all down, but once I get the outer shape of the helmet to where it looks good, where the outer shape is even, or what looks even to me, uh, then at the very end I'll go back with my Dremel and I'll use the sanding drum and I'll literally sand away from the inside any area that's real thick, obviously right here where I had to bring it out, I'll sand that back from the inside and bring the neck opening out to the outer shape. Okay, so if you already got the outer shape nice, perfect, uh, looking smooth where you want it, all you got to worry about is making this lip the same thickness all the way around. And in doing that, you bring the crooked neck opening. Uh, to the outer shape and that straightens it so I'm gonna sand this down here with the uh, I have an electric sander I'll use on this since it's the back it's a pretty big surface area uh, it'll take it down quick I have some 80 grit sandpaper on it and uh, I'll finish with the sanding block by hand and uh, then I'll go back and I'll grind this away Alright, so I got my little, uh, I have a mouse sander here that I'm going to use. I got some 80 grit paper on there. That's going to take it down pretty quick. Um, I'm going to have to turn the vacuum on for this to keep some of the dust down. So before I turn that on and you can't hear me talk, what I'm basically going to do is just hit this from a couple different angles. I'm going to go left to right, okay, this way, and I'll go up and down this way. I may go diagonally to hit this from different directions. Uh, this doesn't have any set direction. This is a random orbit sander so it moves all around but you still want to hit it from different angles so that you don't have flat spots. Uh, I like to hold it like this underneath because that gives me the most control. There's a little dust attachment on there that I just took off. I don't need that. Uh, so I'm going to take the majority of it down then I'll finish here with my uh, hand uh, block and there's finer grit paper on here this is I think 150 uh, just to sort of feather it out and blend the edges out into the rest of the plastic okay so I'll do that and then we'll get this inside taken care of with the Dremel
right, so I'm pretty happy with how this is looking, the outer shape of it. Now I'll finish with my block with some 150 and uh, sort of refine this edge here. It's still a little bit wavy from the sander, so I'll try and smooth that over by hand and feather out anywhere that uh, that didn't get it. When you sand with a block on a certain on an area this big like this, you don't want to sit there and sand like this in one little spot. Go across the entire surface, okay? So you're not creating a flat spot anywhere. Same thing when you go in this direction. Try and cover as much area as you can without going anywhere that you don't need to be obviously I'm trying to keep this confined to the back half for right now blend these edges a little bit feather them in alright and this may take multiple passes this is you know probably the second or third layer of body filler that I've added um, I've done Bondo underneath this filler, which you can see Bondo is the, the reddish pink color. You're not going to get it all on the first shot because you're, you're going to have low spots that you have to go back and fill and fix. Okay. So this looks good now. Alright, now I'm just going to freehand this with my Dremel. i got the rough sanding drum on here. I think it's 80 grit. And I'm just going to Dremel this away from the inside till it's roughly the same thickness as the rest of the helmet. It's kind of hard to tell right now because it's not primed. But uh, up here it's maybe a quarter of an inch. So that's about where I'm going to take it back to. Uh, now you can uh, take a piece of masking tape if you want and uh, cut it to whatever width you want this and go all around following the outside edge. Uh, but I just freehand it. Um, I guess you could use a compass on it too somehow. But you can get it pretty close. You can always finish it off by hand. Uh, just with a piece of sandpaper going along the inside. Alright guys, so here's the cast. It's kind of hard to tell still because it's not primed, but after the Dremel work, you can see I've brought that out, sanded that on the inside to make it even like the rest of the helmet around. If I hold it up to the light, you can probably see it better. You can see the outer edge there, and that lip is relatively the same thickness so uh, yeah that's basically it like I said uh, I jumped ahead for the video I still need to bring out this side uh, and grind that out from the inside now but you get the gist of how I do it um, I did open up a hollow spot here on the inside now so I'll have to 
stick some fiberglass and some resin in there. Um, one quick thing, if you have to bring out a certain spot of your helmet so far that when you grind the inside there's nothing left but Bondo, that this is all Bondo here, lay a piece of fiberglass inside. The Bondo is not strong enough. Okay, so that's it. I'm going to get, uh, get cooking on my other projects here. But uh, there you go.